right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I'm in the middle of creating a bunch of videos where I've done about eight or nine on, first on the hypertext markup language, HTML, which allows us to add content to a web page, then about eight or nine more on CSS, cascading style sheets, which allows us to style the content that we put onto the web page, and now I'm going into JavaScript. And I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm not really inter introducing so much the interactivity into the web pages. I'm just trying to show how to program. And we've got some examples here, but before we do, I'm going to create a, uh, three more examples. All right, because there's three basic loops that you use when you're programming, and those are a while loop, a for loop, and a do while loop. Now, there are other loops in JavaScript and in other languages other than this, all right? But that's all we care about for right now. And I'm going to do something very, very simple. I'm going to print out the numbers from 1 to 10. That's all I'm going to do, all right? And I'm going to, I'm going to do this three ways. The first is with a while loop. All right, so again, the first will be a, a while loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable that's called LCV, which stands for loop control variable. And I'm going to set it equal to one. Again, LCV is loop control variable. And I'm going to say while LCV is less than or equal to 10, let's create another variable in here that we'll just call str for string. Let str, okay? So while it's less than 10, str plus equals lcv plus a backslash n. All right. And then when I'm done, whoop, that's not going to work, right? And I'm going to say plus plus lcv. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to do an alert of str. First, let's see if it works. All right, so all that stuff is commented out that I've done earlier. All that stuff is commented out. So come in here and notice what I have. Well, I've got undefined. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know why I've got the undefined there, but let's see if we can figure that out too. All right, and we're here. There we go. Oh, it is equal to undefined. And when we start, so let's make it equal to the empty string, meaning there's nothing in there. Now let's look. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's fine. Not a problem. So let's talk about what this is, how we got there, etc. All right. So first thing to realize is again, this right here, what we're doing here is we're initializing our loop control variable. That's what we're doing. So that's step one that you have to do when you're working with a loop, is to initialize your loop control variable. Here, we are testing our loop control variable. And finally, here, we are changing the value of our loop control variable. All right. Now, when you use a while loop, there's typically three steps. Initialize, test, and change. So we come in here and we initialize this variable that I just called LCV. We could have called it anything. Sometimes this is where one of the places where programmers oftentimes use ABC or IJK or whatever, but I just called it LCV because it is a loop control variable. This is just the string that's going to hold the numbers from 1 to 10. That's what we use in here. So we initialize it and then we test it. So the first time through, the first time through, it's 1. 1 is less than 10. So we say str equals 1 plus a blank line. No, sir. So like hit, hit enter. And then we add one to it. Now it's two. So now we've got one and two. We do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Then we do it, boom, it's equal to 10. 10 is less than or equal to 10. So STR now equals one, followed by a carriage return, two carriage return, three carriage return, four carriage return, all the way up to 10 carriage return. Then we add one to it, now it's 11. Is 11 less than or equal to 10? No, it's not. So we fall out of the loop and we just alert our string. So again, this has got all of the components. And I do want to mention also that the while is also known as a pretest loop. If I make this 11, how many times do you think we'll go through the loop? Well, let's save and run it. And we get nothing. Why? We got nothing because 11 is not less than or equal to 10. So it just does an alert of string. It totally skips the loop body, which is everything between the curly braces. And it comes down and it just does the alert. Since we set string equal to the empty string to begin with, it just prints out the empty string. So with a pretest loop, if the loop condition is, is uh, wrong initially, in other words, if it can't be met initially, you totally skip the loop body. All right. And that's literally what we want to do right here. All right. So that's the first one. So let's comment this one out. And I'm going to do them in order. And with the next one, we've got a for loop. And guess what? The for loop is also a pretest loop. You now know what pretest means, but let's look at it anyway. So I'm going to grab my code here, same code, but I'm going to make some changes to it. Okay? So um, I'm not going to let LCV equal anything. I'm just going to get rid of this line. In fact, let's just comment out the line. So the first line we now have in here is our let statement, let string equal nothing. Well, this is going to change. Now we're going to put in here for let LCV equal 1, LCV less than or equal to 10, plus plus LCV. So what you can hopefully see is we are initializing, testing, and changing the LCV or our loop control variable right there. We don't need a separate line to initialize anymore. We don't need a separate line anymore like that. That's the whole thing. So previously we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five lines. So we cut down the number of lines we have. Does it work? Let's look. There's our one through 10. So yeah, it appears to work and work just fine. So what's the difference? Well, you've already seen it. But with a for loop, you initialize, you test, and you change the value of your loop control variable in one place. This only runs once. The initialization happens once. So that's the same line we had up here. All right. Now it's the same line that we had up here. Okay. This we have to test in every iteration of our loop to see whether or not it's less than or equal to 10. And once we run this, we automatically do this. So you can see how it's got some brevity to it. Now, the for loop is called a counting loop because you need to know always exactly how many times you're going through it. With a while loop or a do while, you don't necessarily have to. But I've also mentioned that this is also a pretest loop. So what do you think? If I put in 11 in here, what's going to happen? Why did it show me that? There we go. Nothing. So let's try it again. Nothing. Since it's a pretest loop, and since the initial test was false, we skip the loop body and we just print out str. So those are the first two loops. 
And let's talk about the do while, which isn't used that often, but it's called a post, whoops, post test loop. And if you don't know what that means yet, you're going to very quickly. So I'm going to go back to my while loop up here, and I'm going to copy every bit of that, comment this out, and I'm going to comment out what I just put in here for this for loop. And I'm going to paste back, paste that back in. Now this is going to look a lot like, a lot like the while loop, except I now take this and I put it at the bottom. Now I type in the word do. And down at the bottom here, I put in my while statement. And I, this is one where I have to put a semicolon in there. So notice, just like before, so just like before, I'm still initializing. There it is. I'm still testing, but the test comes at the bottom. That's what makes it a post test. And I've got my same stuff in my body that I had in exactly the same as what we had in for the while loop. So what's the difference? Since it's a post test, I'm going to make this 11. And remember, we're not testing this till the bottom of the loop. So we print out 11. It wouldn't matter what we put in here. We could literally put in here like that. And still, we get all that. So with a do while loop, you always run through the loop, the body of the loop. You iterate through it, which is typically the way you refer to it, always at least once. So those are our three loops. Okay. Now, we're at 12 minutes, which is good. That's about where I'd hope to be, about halfway through. So I'm going to comment this out. And I'm going to comment this out. I've got all those now. And I'm going to come down here to where we ask the user to enter in a number. Remember this? And I'm going to uncomment this, the whole thing. Why? Because let's make this a, quote, real program now that will allow us to repeat this, okay? So we've got this please enter a number thing that's in here. So I'm going to put in here let again equal true while again now while again just so you know this is a shortcut oops this is a shortcut right here for saying while again equal 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 true you can do that but it's kind of redundant to do that so i'm going to grab all my code everything that we had in here and i'm going to tab it over all right, so we should come in here the first time because again is true and it should say, please enter a number. All right, and if it's not a number, it's gonna do this. Otherwise, if it's zero, it's gonna do this. Otherwise, it's going to do the remainder. And if the remainder is zero, it's gonna do this. And if it's not zero, it's gonna do that. Okay, and you're like, okay, fine. Now, let's add a little bit more to it though. Let's put another prompt here that says, do you want to run the program again? And we will say, put in either a yes or a no. Okay, let's make one more variable up here that we're gonna call fchar for the first character, and we'll set it equal to nothing. For right now it's set equal to the empty string so this is going to say prompt and i'm going to set f char equal to that do you want to run the program again all right then i'm going to say f char equals f char dot two upper case so i'm going to uppercase it and I'm going to say if 
f char if it's not equal equal to yes all right that means i don't want to run the program again so i'm going to say again equal false now that was a lot to throw at you in a short amount of time let's run it and then come back and decompose it doesn't like something so let's inspect go to the console unexpected end of input on line 171 which usually means that i didn't comment out something that i thought i commented out so i've got that which probably means that shouldn't be in there, this one right here. So let's see. I, I don't know if I fixed it or made it worse. Now it's telling me an unexpected input. No, it's still saying the same thing. Online 171, not a problem. We're, we'll figure it out. All right. So we've got these. Here's our beginning while. There's our if and end if else if and end sl else if else which we have to end in here and we're not right now all right so this should be tabbed over all of this should be tabbed over there's the else now we're asking if you want to do it again etc boom this has got to end the while. There. Now I'm hoping, still telling me here, breakpoint, which I don't want. So let's see if I fixed it. All right, please enter a number, 37. You entered 37, which is an odd number. Do you wish to run the program again? I'm just going to put in here a Y. All right, so it's allowing me to do it again. 56, which is an even number. Do I want to do it again? Now, here's there's still a problem with the program. I'm going to type in yes. And it, well, oh, it did say please enter a number. Okay. All right. What I should have done here and forgot to, okay, it equals two uppercase, but I also want to say F char equals f char dot char at zero. I only want to pluck out that first character. That's what this will do. So let's run it one more time. Enter number. Let's leave it blank. You entered, well, you entered a 37, which is odd. Do you want to run the program again? Now I'll put in yes. And it runs it again. 34, which is even. Good. Do you want to run a program again? No. And it stopped. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. So if you take a look at this, what have we done? We've got all the code that's in here. Everything that's from line 37 all the way through line 62 or 63. That's all the code we had before. But I added a variable called again, which is going to allow me to repeat the program again. All right. And I set it to true so that I run through it at least this time. Then when I get to the bottom and it's either it's either printed out a message that non-numeric or it printed out zero is not odd or even or it printed out even or it printed out odd. When it gets done, then it says, do you want to run the program again? And it's expecting me to put in some kind of an input. It takes that input and it converts it to uppercase. And then it then it just grabs the first character. If that first character is not a Y, it assumes we don't want to continue anymore. So we just set it equal to false, which boom, pushes us out of the loop. All right. That's 19 minutes. Again, I can do a similar type of thing in here. So let me go and comment out all of this stuff. All right, just to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this F char stuff that we have in here. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. All right, and now I'm going to comment this out. 
just I just want to show you that I can use this with a switch as well. So I'm going to get rid of this. And again, come in and say let again equal true. Let f char equal the empty string. Now we've got our let size. But before we do that, let's come back in here and say while again. Again, remember, that is a shortcut for saying while again equal, equal, equal true. All right, so while that's the case, I'm going to grab all this like we did before and tab it over. This shouldn't be commented out anymore. All right, but what I do want to do down here is that same check that we made before. So what are we doing? We've got this variable again like we had before. We've got our F char. While again, which again is a shortcut for this, we should ask the user to enter a size. Then we put it to uppercase and we say, Small if it's, we put it in S, medium if we put it in M, large if we put it in L, extra large if we put it in XL. Otherwise, we should say invalid size input. Then we ask them if they want to do it again. And we grab, we put that to uppercase, and we grab the first character. If the first character wasn't a Y, we stop. So let's see if we can now repeat this. Doesn't like something. Again. This is part of the fun, for lack of better words, when you're doing this. It says I already had again done up there. So what that means is I defined again way up on top, and I didn't comment that out. But now, it, now I did. All right, so that should fix that mistake because I had put it in there twice. That's why I got the error. So let's run this. Please enter. Let's just run through the whole gamut. S. Small, do I want to do it again? Yes. M, medium, do I want to do it again? Yes. L, large, do I want to do it again? Yes. XL, extra large, yep, do I want to do it again? Yes. Let's leave it blank. Invalid size input. Let's put in, do I want to do it again? Yes. Let's put in some garbage. Invalid size input. Now, notice if I put in the whole word yes in lower case, it still lets me do it again. All right, I'll just do an L, and now it'll say, do you want to do it again? I'll say no, and I'm out. So you've now seen how putting, a, putting loops within both an if statement and, so both within an if statement and, within a switch allowed us to basically set this whole thing up. All right. Now, the only thing that's left is this, this whole thing where we enter our name, etc. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab all of that code, all of it, try it again. All right and control X to copy it to the clipboard. All right, and I'm gonna throw it back up at the top of my program. And the reason that I'm going to do that, all right, the reason that I'm gonna put that up here is I'm going to write one more program in the last iteration of this. I'm gonna ask the user to enter their name their age, their height, and their weight. But we're going to put a few things in here. First, name cannot be empty. That's the only thing for name. Two, age must be between, we'll say, 1 and 130. Next, height must be between... 12 and 96. They're going to be in inches. And finally, the weight must be between 1 and, I'm just making this up, 777. All right, so there are our requirements for this program. All right, and I'm going to come back and write that. And based on that, Figure out 
person's body mass index, which is also known as BMI. All right, and I'll come back with that program, write that for you in just a couple minutes.